All right, you guys, thanks very much for coming. Uh, thanks, Nesame, for the introduction. So what I'm going to talk today about is really uh, a comparison of the MapReduce programming model to the sort of traditional database programming model that we're all familiar with. Um, our goal here in this work was really to understand the performance uh, and architectural differences between these two systems and frameworks. Um, both of these frameworks are suitable for large-scale data analysis. And by large-scale data analysis, I mean OLAP-style analytical processing workloads that we're all familiar with. These are characterized typically by large, relatively bulk loads of data and queries over large amounts of data, so large aggregates, for example. Um, we're not talking about transactional workloads here. So I know many of you came here uh, hoping for some controversy because uh, some of the work that we have has engendered controversy. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not very good at being controversial. So what I'm going to do in this talk, um, I'm going to put up these little WMSS logos. Um, this stands for What Would Mike Stonebreaker Say? <laughs> when these pop up, we'll get a pithy quote from Mike Stonebreaker, like, MapReduce is a go slow command for all that <laughs> Those of you who've worked with Mike Stonebreaker know that he um, likes to phrase things in these kinds of uh, colloquial expressions. And, uh, some of them are quite colorful, so hopefully I'll <laughs> All right. So um, you, you might be wondering why am I compare, why does it make sense to compare these two frameworks? I think that's a valid question. In some ways, they're quite different, and I'll reflect on that a little bit more at the end of the talk. But I just want to sort of give two reasons up front for why I think it makes a lot of sense to compare these. Um, the first of these um, well, is sort of an anecdote. This is uh, the CACM article in 2009, the introduction to the MapReduce article by Dave Patterson. Um, he said basically that MapReduce is a fundamentally new way of thinking about programming large distributed systems. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the MapReduce framework, I'll tell you about it in just a few slides, but for those of you who are, you probably feel like, well, MapReduce is just a lot like the way parallel shared nothing databases have always worked. Um, and I think that other communities actually don't realize that this is something that has been done in the parallel shared nothing database community for a long time. I mean, it's really important for us to evangelize and to put our sort of our technology out there for everybody else to see. Um, another anecdote is that uh, so Facebook is using a system called Hive, which is basically a SQL layer that runs on top of the MapReduce framework to manage a four terabyte data warehouse, as reported in this blog down there. Um, so why is why is that interesting or a concern? Well, you know, why didn't Facebook choose to use an existing uh, commercial database package? Why did they feel like they should use the SQL thing running on MapReduce? And what is it that they're giving up by choosing to use MapReduce instead of choosing to use a database system? All right, so I think the real danger here is that we risk losing the kinds of hearts and minds um, of the community, okay, of, of a large set of potential users of parallel database systems. Um, it's important for us to advocate where database systems are the right choice. And it's also important for us to educate people like the developers of Hive about what the pieces of technology are, or what the technologies are inside of parallel database systems that really make a difference. Um, so I, I think that's why it makes a lot of sense to put this, these kinds of studies out there. So I just want to quickly um, talk about the MapReduce framework for those of you who aren't familiar with it. I'm going to assume all of you know something about how parallel shared nothing databases work, so you're not going to get too much tutorial from me, but I'll tell you a little bit about MapReduce. I'm going to do that by way of a very silly example. So, suppose we want to count the number of occurrences of the word monkey or chicken in a collection of documents. All right, so this is our collection of documents represented by green boxes here. In the MapReduce framework, you just think of these documents as being text files. These documents are partitioned across a collection of workers, call these the map workers. And each of these map workers is going to apply a map task to these documents. So for the case of counting the occurrences of the word monkey and chicken, the map task is very simple. It just looks, splits the document into a collection of words, looks at each word, see if it's monkey or chicken, and if it is, it does this emit with that. So what emit does is it produces a key value pair um, that will then be sent on to the next phase. In this case, the key is just the word, and the value is just one. We're going to emit a bunch of ones and then sum all of them together to compute the final count. All right, so once these map workers have uh, applied the map to their documents, um, the, the outputs, these tuples, are going to be sent to these reduce workers. And you can think of the reduce as just being like a group by, a, a, a group by in a parallel database system. So in effect, each one of these workers is going to be responsible for one of these groups. We're going to have a group for the monkey tuples and a group for the chicken tuples. Okay? So and this is sometimes called shuffle in MapReduce. It's basically a repartition operation. 
Okay, so we're going to send all the chicken records to the chicken reducer. We're going to send all the monkey records to the monkey reducer. Okay, and then these reducers are. And this is uh, the reducers are going to apply the reduce function, which is just going to sum up the counts, the total number of records uh, that satisfy the uh, that are you know monkey or chicken records. Um, the reduce function is called once for every uh, instance, um, once for every set of values with the same key. So all about all the records with monkey is the key get run, run by one reduce function. Okay, and so the only thing the programmer writes in this model is the reduce the map function and the reduce function and the framework takes care of executing it. Um, optionally, um, there's a combined step. So in this case, this is Farmer John who wants to get his count of the monkeys and chicken his count of monkeys and chickens. Um, so he does this combined step to collect the records back at him. In map reduce, it's also possible to simply have the reduce workers write the results of their intermediate computations out to disk, um, which can then be used in a subsequent. Uh, map or reduce operation. So you don't have to necessarily collect the results to one final user. For all the results that I'm going to present in this talk, uh, I'm showing the results where this combination has been done. The paper reports on results with and without combinations. So just to um, quickly uh, tell you what you're going to see in the next uh, the rest of this talk, I'm going to compare these two architectures from the sort of point of view of what the features of the architectures are. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, a benchmark tasks that either system, a benchmark that we developed. The benchmark includes a set of tasks that either system should should do pretty well on. We thought uh, I'll give you results for this benchmark, and then I'll have a little bit of sort of navel gazing and talking about um, which which system, what, what, when to pick which system, and which what what these what these various systems are good for. All right. So the first and I think most interesting architectural difference is that MapReduce operates on what we call in situ data. That is data that's just sitting in the file system somewhere, um, and it operates directly on those files, like our map task simply iterated through the words of the, of the file in the example I gave. It doesn't require you to transform or load the data before you process it. Um, there's no schema that's specified up front in MapReduce. The schema is often very implicit in the map job, right? The map job picks the record apart, and understanding something about what the data is supposed to look like. Okay, and this makes it actually very easy to write simple MapReduce programs. Often, uh, you know, if you're a, just getting started with something, it's easier to learn the MapReduce model than it is SQL because in SQL you have to learn this sort of DDL stuff in addition to learning how to write SQL queries. Um, it has the problem though that there's no real logical data independence here, right? The map program is now completely, the structure of the data is completely tied into the way the map program works. And there's no um, very easy way, for example, if you wanted to change what the schema of the data is, there's no, you'd have to go change the code itself to do that. Okay? There's no easy way to maintain and upgrade the code independently of the data. And that's, that's an important lesson that the database community has learned that is sort of not baked into the MapReduce framework. The other thing that's missing from this is MapReduce doesn't provide any support for indices uh, from the sort of at, 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 the, at a base level. MapReduce itself, because the data uh, has no you know, assumed structure, there's no built-in support for indexing. All right. um, obviously, the programming model is quite different. Um, this leads to MapReduce programs, although at first the model looks very simple, it leads to relatively convoluted kinds of programs that get written. Because the only way to get parallelism out of MapReduce is to write these MapReduce jobs. So you end up, if you want good parallel speed up, having to figure out how to express your computation as a large series of uh, connected together map and reduce things. So purportedly, the Google search index construction is more than 10 uh, map reduce phases. And you can imagine that that's a very sort of hairy thing to wrap your head around. It's sort of analogous to multiple joints, to, to, to having multiple joints or subqueries in a database system where you select from the output of a subquery. Um, unfortunately, in MapReduce, there's no built-in optimizer that uh, takes care of how to order or unnest these kinds of, these kinds of nested expressions. And doing semantic analysis to sort of arbitrarily reorder these things would be very hard because these are imperative programs and it's not clear that you can infer when one commutes with another. Um, <clears throat> so the other sort of major difference from an architectural perspective is the MapReduce intermediate results are written to disk. So uh, this is done for fault tolerance purposes, but the map out workers write the results to disk and then the next phase of reduced workers read those results in from disk. Similarly, reduced workers write their results out to disk and the next round of map reduced workers would read those in. This is very different than the sort of pipeline model that we're familiar with in a database, and it uh, has serious implications on the performance of these systems. Uh, another difference, obviously, that sort of ex you might wonder about the expressiveness. I, mean, I don't think that the expressiveness, um, it's sort of at some you know, theoretical level, there's not a big difference in the expressiveness. You can usually figure out how to write almost anything that you could write as an a map reduce job as a collection of SQL with user-defined functions embedded into it. Um, however, you know, this, this SQL plus UDFs can get